Hello my soccer universe! Final review video uh, of Euro 2020. I want to talk about my five favorite moments of the past month um, that came to mind. I had to ac 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 actually read a few out there, but overall these were the moments that I will carry with me going forward. The negative or most disappointing moments I hope I will forget, but these I think I will not. Um, the first thing that I think I will remember from this tournament is definitely the quality of play. Uh, yes, there were some dull games in there and I especially remember the day I even made as a headline the, the, uh, a lean day of football or something like that. Um, you know, when England, Scotland was playing, Croatia against the Czechs and Sweden against Slovakia. This was a particularly bad day, but that was the last one. And then it got really, really exciting. The more the, um, the stakes were raised, the better the games ten uh, got, tendentially. Uh, yes, there were some uh, really dull... Uh, I think the worst uh, knockout game was the one that everyone said is, is will be highly Belgium against Portugal. No, that was really bad. But most of the others lived up to the billing. So I have to say the quality of play, most proactive. We had many goals um, we had also quite a few on goals uh, in there. I've talked about that through that. I think this is all the way that is played and also how we count for goals. So uh, that was really, really um, good to see. Uh, also, I have to say it was aided by the refereeing, which let the game go on. We finally didn't get any bogus hand calls. Uh, yes, maybe at some points you wanted to see a little bit more war, but I think in general letting the game flow and not interrupting so often. We, I don't think we had any game where I would say that the referee um, stopped every five minutes. It was all going and I especially... The tone was set by Makeli, who then uh, rather ironically made this uh, bizarre penalty choice in the semi-final against Denmark. But he set the tone in the first game, uh, Turkey-Italy, when he didn't give the Italians a penalty that during the league was given all the, all the time. But then if you think, think about it, uh, there was no intention there, so don't give the handball. And I hope we'll see this going forward in the leagues as well. So that was a very positive moment. Now, the next one is, and I hate to do political statements, but this is one that I have to say, I call it embrace the rainbow. Uh, and this goes with the um, fan misbehavior, which was the second worst moment. The way that, and it's not only the rainbow, it's also that players are socially conscious and embrace that you have to point out racism and also this equality in sexual orientation. There is no need to discriminate against uh, one another. Um, and the team that I want to point out here that I really, and again, I consume mostly English speaking and German speaking media, but I have to say uh, the German national, national team really took this to heart. And my redemption moment was when, you know, the Hungarian thugs in Munich and Goretzka scores the equalizer and he just shows them the heart and says, yeah, you know, love wins. That, that to me was one of the moments of the tournament uh, in many ways. Uh, that it, they got a little bit too much with all the sponsors. I think if it's commercially exploited, I don't like that. But I think that the English national team kneeling, I did not necessarily like it, not others didn't join, although everyone had their reason. I think I'm fine if some are kneeling and some are not kneeling, but you know, at least make the gesture. I think this is very important and there's a lot of social consciousness that this was on full display. Soccer is not a non-political sport anymore, whether you like it or not. And I would claim that most of the players have their heart on the right place in that regard. So that was one thing that got more into my uh, percep uh, per per perception, uh, more onto my radar than any tournament before. Leaving the political stage, I have to say number three has to be Copenhagen. Uh, Copenhagen, Copenhagen, however, however, that was the best venue. Amsterdam was cool. Copenhagen was outstanding. That was absolutely outstanding. Yes. 
you had the drama around Ericsson and that was a rallying cry. But already that you had the stadium kind of full there because the situation in Denmark allowed for it. Uh, so this was not uh, that forced, uh, you know, you didn't, I don't suspect the Danish government doing some propaganda stuff and showing the world how great we are with COVID. I don't expect it there. I think there, uh, it, the handling of the whole pandemic was really, really well. Uh, then the situation, the Belgium game already, where it was all so emotional. The Danish team being carried forward and, and then exploded all in this Russia game, which was probably the best atmosphere of the entire tournament. Bar none. This was amazing. Then um, Denmark became the story, but I made the video title that uh, Denmark is the emotional heart of this Europe Euros and absolutely uh, Copenhagen. Those were the fun games. And then to top it off, you got arguably the best knockout game also in that stadium. And I was so happy that Denmark could host um, tour, uh, tour tour tournament games for one of the uh, one of the big tournaments, because that would not happen otherwise. So there it paid off. So Copenhagen, very very high and very very fondly remembered. However, there are two more things that I will remember more, and uh, the one is the manic Monday. We have already said it's connected to Copenhagen. When in two games they ended both in regulation 3-3, then the Spain game had two in extra time and Switzerland France had the penalty show, show, show where the world champions got eliminated. And both games absolutely the same uh, run of play, the outsider taking leads, the favorite getting a 3-1 lead, the outsider then pulling the game in the dying minutes of the game, pulling it level. And then it went slightly different. Spain, although almost conceding, could hang in, got the win. And there was the, a little bit of Morata redemption story, which then got hit on him as well. Uh, back and France, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, losing on penalties. And I have to say probably could have, should have uh, lost in regulation. Two amazing games. This was probably the best day of international soccer that I have seen in my life. And yes, I was so done that I didn't see uh, much, uh, I didn't see France Switzerland, but I was so happy that I had the presence of mind because the first ever France Switzerland was not that great, although Switzerland had the lead. But I had the presence of mind and said, let's record this. Let's record this. And I didn't regret it. I woke up in the morning and I watched the second half and everything else. Absolutely madness, amazing. I cannot speak high of that. This will be fondly remembered. I'm still debate. I mean, the way I'm debating this is what was the best international tournament that I have watched so far? For me, so far has been Euro 20, uh, 2000. This one probably will not edge Euro 2000, but it is in, a com com in, in the conversation and I was, uh, that was the epitome of that. This, I have not seen a better day. With more drama and the outcome, yes, maybe not entirely to my liking, however, uh, very re remarkable and good for the remainder of the tournament. And what can top this? Well, I guess you can guess it. The best team won, Italy. Italy was a joy to watch. How often can you say this? Italy was a joy to watch. I think in 2012 we said Italy is a joy to watch. I don't think we've said it ever since and ever before that. Yes, Italy won a World Cup. We're on, a, on the back of a very great defensive performance. However, never has Italy been seen as the team that everyone enjoyed watching, everyone was ra raving about how positive they're playing uh, and coming on the back of non-qualification to the World Cup, going all the way, admittedly lucky against Spain. I think this is my only cap cabinet, although they played well in there as well, but Spain had them on the ropes, as did Austria for, for a moment. So they had their rough moments, um, but for all the uh, for all the games except the Spain game, I would argue that Italy was the better team. They had fun in the group stage, and then uh, got a little test. Played amazing against Belgium in the first half. 
fought hard, dug in, combined their new virtues with their old ones in the Spain match and then found a way back against an England team that seemed to swallow them up at first and then they found a way back and win it all and to top it all off they did it all by winning two penalty shootouts in a row and I cannot overstate this. It's the third team technically to do so. I think it's the second team ever because I repeat it again, Croatia did it in 2018. However, in Croatia had the penalty shootout against Russia, both had in the previous round of penalty shootout. Before that, and we had quite a few where two consecutive te teams had to go in two consecutive penalty shootouts. You do not win two consecutive penalty shootouts. Simply not. Italy did it. Argentina did it in 1990. That is a very, very big statistic. And also, uh, in both penalty shootouts, they had the first miss on both occasions and they came back. So uh, there is a lot to be said about the mental strength of this team but also i think the style of play and a big vindication for all italian soccer fans in a way i also found it interesting that i think euro 2020 proved also to be a vindication on serie a who has been not doing well in the champ champs league but you can see that most serie a players in the tournament went relatively far and the uh, final was more or less a Serie A best 11 against the Premier League. Not quite best 11, because you know there are many international stars, but I found that also interesting. But yeah, to me, this was the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate uh, thing that I will remember. Not only did Italy win, and giving me uh, one of the most joyful days of me watching international football. But they did it in style. And that is something I think I will remember for a long, 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 long time. And, you know, beating... Uh, and I have to say, yeah, uh, starting in Rome, ending in Wembley, playing the first and the last game. Italy has always been there throughout the tournament. They set the standard and then they finished it off. Uh, it was a joy. It was absolutely a joy. And I totally enjoyed watching Italy uh, and I hope this will carry forward. So yeah, that ends my official reviews. Uh, to send it uh, all off, I will give you of course my uh, final uh, video, which will be uh, more or less a montage of the best moments. Uh, I will not ed edit this one because that uh, will be a little bit longer one and it's also a little bit more work that's why those videos were a little bit more lo-fi now i just wanted to get them out so that i can get the montage in on time but i hope you enjoyed this i hope you also enjoyed euro 2020 uh, i would like to hear from you what were your best moments of the tournament uh give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i'll talk to you soon bye Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.